Hello everyone. So in this video again, we'll continue our discussion with the various aptitude-based questions that we see in the recruitment examination of various companies. So various tech-based companies, be it your uh, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, or as such, or any other software-based companies or IT companies, or maybe uh, companies pertaining to the core sector, be it your mechanical core companies, electrical or civil core companies. They all uh, take up aptitude test as a part of their recruitment process. So the questions that we will be discussing in these videos again are among the previous year questions that have come in the placement or the aptitude section of the recruitment drives of all these companies, be it the off-campus recruitment drives or the on-campus recruitment drives. The core uh, idea behind doing this video is to get into familiarized with the kind of questions that you will be seeing. Uh, in this kind of examination and to help you develop the kind of strategy that is needed to solve this kind of problems in general. So let's take a look at uh, another question. An athlete decides to run the same distance in one fourth of the less time that she usually took. So by how much percent should she increase her average speed? Okay. So here one thing is said that uh, distance remains constant. Okay. So that initial time bt and uh, the final at t1 initial time bt therefore final time will be uh, nothing but one fourth of the less so one fourth less is t minus one by four t there is three by four t okay now let me uh, take you back to a very simple equation that, that is distance equal to speed into time okay now, if distance is constant, speed is inversely proportional to time or time is inversely proportional to speed. So, therefore, time ratio, suppose t initial by t final will always be inverse of speed ratio, that is speed final by speed initial. Okay. So, now, if my uh, initial speed <coughs> be si, and my final speed be SF. So we can write the same as TI by TF equal to SF by SI, which can be further. So if we write TI, substitute TI by T, SF by what to say? 3 by 4 T. Okay, 3 by 4 T. So T gets cancelled. So SF. Uh, by SI will be 4 by 3. So that is, uh, we can see uh, SF is 4, say 4 km per hour. I'm just giving this a random unit. And SI, say 3 km per hour. So how much increment do we see here uh, from SI to SF? <coughs> we see an increase of 1. So 1 has been increased from 3, that is 1 by 3, which is nothing but 33.33%, which is our final answer. So, the speed should increase, SF should be 33, uh, speed should be increased by by 33.33%. I hope this is clear how we arrived at the conclusion of the same. We simply use speed and time ratio. Now, with that said, let's move on to the second question. Yeah. So, the second question uh, is based on mensuration. So, let's take a look. In a building, there are five rooms, each having equal area. Okay, the area of each room is the same. The length of the room is 40, uh, 4 meter, uh, breadth is 5 meter, and height is 2 meter. Okay. If 17 uh, bricks are needed to make square meter, then how many bricks are needed to make the floor of a particular room? So uh, let's take a look. Here, given length equal to 4 meter, breadth equal to 5 meter, and height equal to 2 meter. So essentially, uh, what we have here is that mm -hmm. 
what we have is simply a cuboid. Okay. This is so say this is the length equal to five. This is the breadth equal to four. Oh, sorry, length is four or breadth is length is four. Length is four, breadth is five, and height. This is the height. Each equal to two. So this is now. If we are looking to find the area, so the total surface area of a cuboid is cuboid is always given by two into L B plus two into B uh, plus B H plus L H. So this is what the total. Our surface area formula is so now applying the same over here we have T S A that will be two length into breadth being twenty breadth into height being ten and length into height being eight that is two thirty eight seventy six square meter okay now what we have is that seventeen bricks are needed. To make a square meter, so therefore, seventeen bricks needed for one square meter. So therefore, for seventy-six square meter, we have seventy-six into seventeen bricks. Okay, seventy-six into uh, seventeen bricks. Okay. So with that, that so this is for one room. Okay, this is for one room. Now it is said that there are five rooms in a floor. So therefore, for five rooms, we have seventy-six into seventeen into five, which comes out to be six four six zero. So I hope this is clear. We simply use a simple mensurations formula to solve the same. So hopefully this is clear. So now let's let let's move on to the next question. Okay. So the next question is again based on mensuration. So let's take a look. One man wants to build a wall. The length and breadth of the wall are twenty and thirty respectively. Thirty centimeters, okay. Centimeters respectively. He needs thirty-five bricks for one square centimeter. Then how many bricks does he need? So we have length equal to twenty centimeter, breadth equal to thirty centimeter. So now the area will be twenty into thirty centimeter square. In turn, will give us six hundred centimeter square. Now, for one centimeter square, he needs thirty-five bricks. Okay, given the question. Therefore, for six hundred centimeter square, he needs six hundred into thirty-five b. Uh, six hundred thirty. We have three eighteen twenty one zero zero twenty five uh, twenty one thousand bricks. I hope this is clear. How we arrived at the conclusion of the same. So with that said, we have come to the end of the video. And hopefully, all the three questions that we have discussed are clear to you. Can we go through all the questions and go through this video in case you are having any kind of difficulty in trying to understand the same? Go through the video, uh, the questions as many times as you feel comfortable, and you are able to get the gist of all the questions and try to solve all these questions on your own so that you can get a fair bit of idea regarding the concepts or the formulas that we have used to us solving all these questions in general. So hopefully all the things are clear to you, and we'll continue having a uh, video similar like this in the subsequent videos as well. So with that said, we'll come to the end of the video, and hopefully everything is clear. I'm signing off. Thank you so much.